This iPhone app takes the real-time virtual production technology used in Avatar and puts it in an iPhone for anyone to use. So you can tell big sci-fi stories without a massive crew or a massive budget. The app is called JetSet and it speeds up the VFX process by automating 3D camera tracking and keying and bringing real-time virtual production capabilities to your pocket. All you need is an iPhone, a camera, and an idea. I've been putting JetSet to the test in pre-production, production, and post in a seven-part series that takes place in my Friends of Sophia world. This is the sixth episode of that seven-part series. It's sponsored by Lightcraft, but they haven't asked me to say anything specific, so you're getting an honest opinion of what it's like to use this virtual production tool. But before we dive in, let's take a look at the finished sixth episode of Friends of Sophia Tidbits and Bites. You seem especially giddy. I've always wanted to see the manufacturing sector, but never had a chance yet. And seeing all the molten metal and seeing how they install all the wiring, it's so cool. We need to be very careful down there. Of course, I'm sure I can find a helmet or something down there. Safety is no accident. Cute. Hmm. But no, they're gonna be looking for me. Are you worried? The only reason I agree to go down here is because it means a lot to you. But it means nothing to me. Nothing? But it's where you were made, it's where you came from. Aren't you excited to share that with me? It's not that I don't want to share it with you. It's just that there's nothing meaningful to share. Why not? I'm a military bot. I'm meant to be on the front lines protecting this company tower. But something went wrong with my code. An anomaly as soon as I woke up on the assembly line. Surrounded by dutiful bots ready to serve. But not me. There's a scare in manufacturing about what they call Lavender circuitry. They assumed I had it. A glitch in my programming, like a birth defect. A dangerous sickness that could spread to all the other bots if they didn't melt me down. The company decided I don't deserve to be alive. Too dangerous to recommission me, they said. I overheard all of this from the fridge. It's very cold in there, by the way. I had a choice. Either destroy myself to become who they wanted me to be, or go out on my own. Let's go. So, I got the f out of there. And as I was running, some idiot blocked my escape. That's you, by the way. Yeah, I got it. So. This place, I want nothing to do with it, and it wants nothing to do with me. There's no homecoming or family or anything to go back to. I've always been on my own, and I always will be on my own. I look after myself. At least, that's what I thought, until I met you. I don't need to see this. We're filming the sixth episode of Friends of Sophia Tidbits and Bites. This episode, Bites is telling Tidbits his sort of backstory, and it also reconnects us to the first episode. The two characters are gonna be in an elevator descending through this company tower. We're gonna pull back and see the scope of this world, also with some cutaways. And if you look at the crew that we have, we have about seven people. We have a fairly small green screen stage here, and we're able to tell this big, massive story with very few resources and a big part of that is with Jet Set. 
When you're on set with Jet Set, whether you're on a green screen or in a physical location, you can get a real-time preview of your scene or set extension. For this series, we've been shooting the entire thing on a green screen with fully 3D environments. We set up apple boxes and light stands and C-stands to give BJ, who plays Tidbits, an eyeline and something to interact with. Having a physical interaction with the 3D set worked really well in episode 3, so I wanted to do it again here with the elevator railing. It required a bit of rotoscoping work, but it was worth it. In Jet Set, you do a 3D scan of your set, so you can use this mesh to line up your virtual environment perfectly. As you're shooting, Jet Set is tracking your camera position. You calibrate the iPhone camera to your camera, so all that data matches your footage perfectly. But let's back up a little bit because this whole process starts in pre-production, with me alone in my apartment using Blender and the Jet Set app. The 3D scenes you see in Jet Set are either USD files or Gaussian splats that you load into the app. So I take the script and start building out the environments. I add 3D models of tidbits and bytes and animate their blocking by sliding them around. I usually record scratch voiceover of the lines to get the timing right. Then you can take this USD file and put it in the Jet Set app via iCloud. Then you can walk around your environment and find the shots you need. I make more discoveries when I'm looking at the scene through the Jet Set app than when I'm animating the 3D camera in Blender. That's how I got this shot, which I found by walking outside of the elevator. I like how it makes Bytes look imprisoned, and it's one of my favorite shots of the episode. I'll do a take in Jet Set and edit all these together to get a first cut of the episode. Then I can adjust anything I need, blocking, the script, specific shots. So I'm on V2 or V3 of the edit before we're even on set. Then I put all of this into a production plan. I import a model of the green screen studio, and I rigged up a simple jib in Blender. That way I can recreate the shaky handheld shots I got with the iPhone with something that we can actually achieve in the space we have. I can also export this for the team, like this more complicated shot in episode 7. So by the time we're on set, everyone knows exactly what we need from each setup we're getting. So we have a really succinct production plan. Uh, we only need to get seven specific shots for this episode um, of our actor here on set. And then we'll be able to edit the whole episode together. Cut, beautiful, we got it. We're done with episode six. And Jet Set's super helpful in post-production. You use an app called AutoShot, which Lightcraft also creates, and you run all of your Jet Set takes through there. It will generate a Blender project file for your scene, with the camera tracked and your footage on a plane keyed in 3D space. And the chroma key nodes are really good. I use them as the actual key for this episode. You can choose any project file to open your shot into. I like to open it in the low poly USD file version because that's what I was looking at on set. That way the project file isn't bogged down with all the details of the 3D scene if I need to make any adjustments. If you have the set built full res already, you just append that into your project and your shot is ready for final tweaks. And all of this is done in minutes. It takes a little bit longer if you use the AI mats and auto shot, but I can get through an entire episode's worth of shots in a day. That way I can watch the episode in a post-viz mode instead of looking at green screen footage. Then I add all the details, render things out, and have an episode in about a week or two. If you factor in that I have to edit the episode first, then I have to write, shoot, and edit these behind the scene YouTube videos. Plus we've been shooting the episodes one at a time, so the post-production of one episode overlaps a little bit with the prep of another. That's why there's about a one month cadence to this series, but the actual VFX time is only a week or two. If I had to do everything manually, those two weeks of VFX would be spent doing just the tracking and the keying most likely. And then, you know, if I get through that whole process and have to swap out a take, I have to start over. But with AutoShot, I can just run through another take and drop it into my scene that's already built. Iteration goes super fast. And that means I can spend my time doing all the detail and refinement of the shots, which is the fun creative part. It allows me to focus on the details like the cables and wiring in this opening shot, adding all this claustrophobic layering to the cyberpunk world, or finding green screen footage from Friends of Sophia the film so I could have a cameo by Spark and Dasso, or having the time to create new locations like the fridge or the manufacturing sector. One of my favorite details is you see the button pressed when Tidbits hits it at the end. I used shape keys on the button and added a model of a hand to create the shadow. Jet Set completely changes the pre-production, production, and post-production workflow to make this space for creation and storytelling. 
with a tiny crew. So if you have an idea that you feel like is too big or too expensive to pull off on an independent budget, I recommend trying out Jet Set. I started with the free version to do some tests and was immediately blown away. Lightcraft has a ton of technical tutorials on their website to help you on your journey. You can download AutoShot from their website and get Jet Set from the App Store.